Hello, in today's video I will explain the mathematical function arctangent2. Arctangent2 is highly related to arctangent, but arctangent2 solves certain problems that exist when we use classical arctangent function. Arctangent2 is highly used in atmospheric sciences and engineering. Whenever we are dealing with some circular geometry, we carry out wind direction measurements, want to analyze those data to represent wind direction measurements in a computer code, more often than not, you will end up with arctangent 2 function. And instead of me every single time in future videos trying to qualitatively in one sentence explain the difference between arctangent and arctangent 2, I decided to devote one entire video to that because I think the difference is not so trivial that can be explained in one sentence. This should be useful for you, especially if you are starting with uh, mathematical trigonometry right now. And uh, in the rest of this video, I will define arc tangent, and then you will see some of the problems associated with that function. And then, of course, you will see how arctangent 2 solve these problems. In addition to that, I will also at the end of the video define something called the standard angle. So these two concepts, arctangent 2 and the standard angle, will be the core of today's video. Let's do it. We will start here by defining tangent and inverse tangent or arctangent. Let's say we have this right angle triangle and angle phi over here. Let this be y and this x. Tangent of this angle phi is then y over x or uh, opposite divided by adjacent side. Inverse function of tangent called arc tangent will give us angle phi if we know y and x, and it will be atan of y over x. However, this function only works if x is larger than zero. Let me demonstrate that. Here I have a Cartesian coordinate system x and y, and let's say this is uh, origin, and let's say I have point P over here. This distance between origin and point P is sometimes also called ray or beam. If this is angle phi, then I hope that you can see that this would be x projection of this beam, and this would be y projection of this beam. And in this case, arc tangent would be exactly like that because this situation is exactly the same as this situation. There is no problem. But let's say this point P is over here. Let's call it P prime to make it different. Now this over here is angle phi prime. Well, what is this angle phi prime? Phi prime is arc tangent of y prime over x prime. But notice something that this y prime that is projection of this beam to y axis is positive whereas x prime which is this over here is now negative. And this is a problem. It's a problem because let's plug in some numbers. Let's just, for the sake of argument, assume that y is positive 1 and x has to be negative, so let's say it's negative 1. You can see that this will be arc tangent of negative 1 and that is minus 45 degrees if we give it in degrees or minus pi over 4. But what would be minus 45 degrees over here? Remember, in mathematics, 
positive angles are counterclockwise and negative angles are clockwise. So if we measure angle from positive x axis, then minus 45 would be this angle. So instead of retrieving this angle for point P prime, I would actually get reflection on the other side and that is not something that I want. Now you can plug in any numbers you want over here. You will see that you will always get angles in the first or fourth quadrant. In other words, in this region over here. You will never pass to second or third quadrant using only arctangent function. And this is where the idea of arctangent 2 comes into play. We want to extend the domain of arctangent function beyond first and fourth quadrant. So formally, we say that arctangent function is in the interval of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Because this is pi over 2 and this would be minus pi over 2. And arctangent 2 function is in the interval minus pi to pi. Let's see how we achieve this extension of arctangent to arctangent 2. Here I will have a nice and large Cartesian coordinate system and over here I will write arctangent 2 function. This is first quadrant from 0 to 90 degrees, from 90 to 180 is what we call second quadrant, third quadrant, and this would be fourth quadrant. First, if we are in the first quadrant, let's take a point over here. This is a beam between origin and that point, and angle phi is measured as the shortest angle between positive x-axis and the beam between O and that point. In this case, function arctangent 2 is exactly the same as function arctangent because that would be this case over here and we didn't have any problem. So, arctangent 2 is arctangent of y over x in the first quadrant. And you will notice that in the first quadrant x is positive and y is also positive. Now let's go to second quadrant. We have point here and this is the beam to that point. Shortest angle with respect to positive z uh, positive x axis is this. But we saw that regular arc tangent will actually give us this angle. Now, to account for that, we say that arc tangent 2 is arc tangent of y over x, which will give us angle somewhere here, and then we have to add pi or 180 degrees to come from here all the way here. In other words, if we are here and I add pi, then I get over here. And this is arctangent 2 in the second quadrant. Now let's go to third quadrant. We have point here and this is the beam to that point. Now what would be angle phi in this case? It's always the shortest angle with the positive x-axis, so this would be angle phi. But because this angle phi is clockwise in mathematics, it would be negative. If we take the same analogy that we had here, 
then you will see that arc tangent will reflect this point over here actually. So arc tangent 2 will be arc tangent of y over x minus pi. So that would be third quadrant. Very well, let's go now to fourth quadrant. We have point here, then angle phi would be this. And uh, arc tangent doesn't have any problem in the fourth quadrant, so arc tangent 2 it ju is just arc tangent of y over x in fourth quadrant. Now, let's see some special cases. What happens if x is zero? If x is zero, then in the formulation of arc tangent, we will divide by zero and we cannot do it. If x is equal to zero and y is positive, and that means we are positioned on the y-axis, then, by definition, arc tangent 2 is pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. Similarly, when x is 0 and y is negative, and that would be this part of the y-axis, negative part, we see that arc tangent 2 will be minus pi over 2, this angle. And again, negative because it's clockwise. You see, it's not true that only Chuck Norris can divide by zero. Arctangent 2 can also divide by zero. And lastly, when x is equal y and that is equal zero, when both of them are equal zero, then arctangent 2 is undefined. Now you will notice that purposely I didn't put arguments here, arctangent of x, y, or y, x. And the reason is that I would like you to pay attention to that. If you are using this function in a computer codes, then some computer codes require you from you to first enter y and then x. So it would be arctangent of y and x, whereas some other computer codes ask you to first enter x then y. For example, MATLAB, uh, Python, and so on, they are defined as arctangent 2 of y and x. And for example, Microsoft Excel is defined as arctangent 2 of x and y. So pay attention how your computer code of choice is using this function arctangent 2. In the last part of this video, I would like to explain the difference between arctangent 2 and something that we call standard angle. Let's call that standard angle theta. And I will use red color to represent it. Sometimes we want to have angles that are always positive. And that will be this standard angle. So standard angle is the counterclockwise angle from the positive x axis to the beam that connects origin and point P. In the first quadrant, this would be angle theta for this point over here. In other words, it's the same as angle phi. This would be standard angle for this point over here. In other words, in the second quadrant, it's the same as angle phi. But things change in third and fourth quadrant as following. This was angle phi. But now, standard angle will be actually this. And it's positive because it's counterclockwise. So in this third quadrant, instead of subtracting pi, we need to add pi to get theta instead of arctangent 2. In fourth quadrant, this would be angle theta, standard angle. So instead of this small angle to get this large angle, we need to add 2 pi or 360 degrees. So we add 2 pi to the result of arctangent y over x. Special case 
for pi over 2 is the same, but special case for minus pi over 2 is not the same because, well, let me put it, this would be theta, and that is clearly 270 degrees, which is plus 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees. This video described the difference between arctangent and arctangent 2, but more importantly we saw why we have to use arctangent 2 if we want to extract angles from the second and third quadrant. We also introduced the concept of the standard angle, and I hope some of you can already see that the standard angle is quite similar to the concept of wind rows and wind direction measurements. In the case of wind direction measurements and their graphical representation, namely wind rows, we measure angles only in one direction, but unfortunately in case of wind rows we measure in the clockwise direction, not counterclockwise like here, but nevertheless we don't measure the shortest angle from some reference direction, but we always use the same direction, and in the case of wind rows, the reference direction is not to the right, like it was here, the positive x axis, but it was north direction. However, I will explain this in more details in the following videos. Until then, goodbye.